Hey everybody, I'm going to give you a little video help on um, IXL BB.13. It's called Match Quadratic Functions and Graphs. Okay, so this kind of tests your knowledge of quadratic functions and what they look like compared to the parent function. Okay, so um, think about when we did transformations, the different ways that we can uh, change up the parent function of a quadratic, right? Um, so some things to look out for are stretching and compressing. So remember, if we're talking about, if we're talking about a, the value of a in a function, if a is greater than one, then we know we're going to have what's called a vertical vertical stretch. Okay, a vertical stretch. Um, if a is between zero and one. If A is between zero and one, we're going to have what's called a vertical compression. Okay, so an example of this is if A is one half, an example of the stretch would be if A is equal to two. Okay, um, so keep those things in mind. Um, keep in mind um, when you factor a quadratic, when you factor a quadratic. Um, if you end up with something like x plus 3 times x minus 4, right? That's going to give you some hints to be able to find the graph of the function. Um, remember the zero product property. So if I take, if I take, sorry, if I take these binomials and I set them equal to zero, I can solve for the x-intercepts of the function. So I'm looking for an x-intercept of negative 3, and I'm looking for an x-intercept of positive four, okay? So that's gonna help out a little bit. Um, what also might help out, uh, going back to A, right? Remember, if A is positive, if A is positive, that tells us that the function opens up. And if A is negative, that tells me that the function's gonna open down. So that's gonna give us a little bit of hint as to how to match up these graphs as well, okay? All right, so I, I pulled a couple of examples for us to go through, and you have the guided notes on this, okay? So uh, remember to email this to me when you, are, when you are finished, when you have completed this assignment, okay? So in example number one, it tells us to match each quadratic function to its graph. I've got two functions. One's called f of x, and one is called g of x. Now, on IXL, you would take uh, the blue functions right here, and there's going to be a box below, and you would just drag the answer into those boxes on, on IXL, okay? Now, if we just look at f of x, I have standard form of the quadratic right here. So if you just look at this little piece right here, it's negative 2x squared minus 20x minus 42, and that is the standard form function of the quadratic. So the standard form tells us a couple of things. Well, for one thing, a is negative. So that tells me that the function opens down. Well, both of these graphs open down, so that's not going to help us a whole lot. Um, a is 2. A is a number greater than, greater than 1, so that tells me it's going to be a vertical stretch. If I'm looking at these two functions right here, which one looks like it's stretched out more vertically? You know, which one looks like it's uh, a little bit skinnier than the other one? I would go with this one right here. This one looks a little bit skinnier, okay? Let's keep investigating. Um, if it's in standard form, what does that, what does the value of C tell us? Well, that's the y-intercept, right? The y-intercept is negative 42. Well, this one right here has a y-intercept of zero. This one, we can't see the y-intercept. It's not actually on the graph, but what if we were to zoom out? Do you think that if this side continues to go down and down and down and down and down and down, would it hit the y-axis at 42? Negative 42? Maybe. Maybe. We don't quite know, but uh, I mean, I know for sure that this one has a y-intercept of zero, so I'm venturing to say that this one is going to be f of x. Right here, they give us the factored form. They give us the factored form. So where does this negative two come from? Well, it's the greatest common factor of A, B, and C in standard form. So they factored out a, two, a negative two, actually. And when they factored out a negative two, you were left with x squared plus 10x plus, uh, what is that? Uh, half of 42 is what, 21? 
and then they factored they factored the remaining trinomial and that's how you end up with x plus 7 and x plus 3 right well zero product property so if i take each one of those binomials and i set them equal to zero it's going to give me the x intercepts of the function so i get x is equal to negative 7 and i'm going to get x is equal to negative 3 well, which one of these two functions has x-intercepts of negative seven and negative three? Right here, here's negative seven and here's negative three. So sure enough, f of x is this graph right here, the one, remember that one that was skinny, it opens down, it has a y-intercept of negative 42, it has x-intercepts of negative seven and negative three, okay? So this one would be the f of, f, f of x function, so negative 2x squared minus 20x minus 42, okay? That means this one has to be the g of x function. And look at the g of x function. So it's got uh, negative x squared, let's see if you can see that, plus 2x. So here's the standard form, right? That's standard form. What, what's missing from standard form? I've got the value of a, I have b. What's c? If it's not there, then c is understood to be zero. And remember in standard form, C is always the y-intercept. Well, if you look at this graph right here, what's your y-intercept? It's zero, okay? So, hey, that matches up well. Look at A, it's negative, that means it opens down, okay? A is equal to one in this case, right? Which would be the same size as the parent function, okay? And then they do the factored form. They do the factored form of your quadratic. What, what do these two terms have in common? Well, they have a negative x in common. So they factored out a negative x, right? And I could actually say right here, I could say negative x is equal to zero, and I'm gonna divide both sides by negative one. I get x is equal to zero. That's one of the intercepts. The other, other intercept is gonna be found by doing x minus two is equal to zero. Let me add two to both sides, and I get x is equal to two. So do I have x-intercepts of zero and two? Let's see, zero and two, there we go. So we matched it up. So this one would be the g of x function, okay? So that's how, that's how we're gonna do it. So I pulled, this one was probably one of the easier ones that you'll do, okay? In example two, it's, um, so you're getting up into the 80s and 90s on IXL, and they're gonna start just giving you more graphs to, to sort out at one time. So the max that they're gonna give you are four graphs at a time. So let's go through these. And, and I just wanna take a look at, I've got f of x, g of x, h of x, and k of x. Let's look at the values of a and see if we can start to kind of um, start trying to figure out which ones are which just by looking at a. So in f of x, a is negative, g of x, a is negative, h of x, a, a is negative. But if I look at k of x, a is positive. It's a positive x squared. And if I come over here and look at these graphs, there's only one of them that opens up, right? So right there, process of elimination, I know for a fact that k of x is going to be this one that opens up. Okay, it's gonna be that one. And in fact, look at the standard form of the function, right? Look at your y-intercept, positive nine. The only one in here that has a y-intercept of positive nine is the one that opens up right there. So there, there's another way that I can try to find, uh, try to figure out um, what my intercepts are, okay? Uh, this one, in fact, if I wanna figure out my x-intercept, I've got x minus three squared is equal to zero. I'm gonna take the square root of both sides. The square root of zero is zero. So x minus three is equal to zero. Add three to both sides. This one actually only has one x intercept, right? And it is at three, it is at three. So this one is our k of x. I'm just gonna put k of x right there. Okay, let's, so we've narrowed it down to k of x. We've used this one. The other ones all have negative signs for a. So they all open down, okay? Let's see if we can figure out any other ones by process of elimination. So I've got a negative two here, I've got a negative one and a negative two. Well, the ones that have negative twos, think about it, A is greater than one, that's gonna be a vertical stretch, okay? One, the one where A is negative one, that one's gonna be the same size as the parent function. So out of the three that are left, two of them have been stretched vertically and only one is the same size as the parent function, right? So which two look as though they've been stretched? 
If you said these two, you would be correct. So I'm gonna focus in on this one because it looks to be the same size as the parent function. And I'm gonna focus in on this one that says g of x, okay? Now, just looking at the standard form of g of x, my y-intercept is negative 16. So if I come to my graph right here, um, I don't have that far down on my graph. I can't quite tell if it's gonna be negative 16. It might, I don't know. But I do know for sure that this one has a y-intercept of two and this one has a y-intercept of negative two. So it's definitely not these two. It's most likely gonna be this one, right? Okay, um, and then what about the factored form? So I have negative and then x plus four squared, right? So if I solved, if I solved for that one, right, I would end up with an x-intercept of negative four, right there. There's my x-intercept of negative four. So this one indeed is g of x, okay? All right, and then on for the last two, we're choosing between f of x and h of x. So if I look at the standard form, standard form I think is gonna help us most on this one because in standard form, c is your y-intercept f of x has a y-intercept of positive two, and h of x has a y-intercept of negative two. So if I am just focusing on those intercepts, this one that has a positive two, right here, positive two for the x-intercept, uh, for the y-intercept, right? So this one would be our f of x, and this one that has a y-intercept of negative two is gonna be our h of x, okay? So use those different qualities, um, whether A is positive or negative, whether A is between zero and one or greater than one, um, so if you can use the factored form and set that equal to zero, set that X, uh, that factored form equal to zero and find the x-intercepts to help you out. Those are the kinds of things that you're gonna do to um, match up these graphs. If you have any questions, let me know.